Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Clark. I'm a powerlifter, personal trainer and coach, and editor-in-chief of British Strength Magazine. And this is the first installment of what could potentially be an ongoing vlog series on uh, YouTube. And I'll say potentially because, you know, I'm not sure how long it'll all take to edit. I'm not sure whether I actually want to do it, whether I care about whether people care about me speaking about my views and my experiences, my training and this, that and the other. But if I decide that all that's important and it's worthwhile, then I'll carry it on. Anyway, so for the very first one, I'm going to tell you about the weekend that I'm just traveling back from. I am from Manchester. I don't know if you can tell by the accent, but that's where I'm from and I now live in Newcastle. So, obviously all my friends are back down in the 0161 and I've traveled up, <clears throat> no I've not, I've traveled down uh, to go to a wedding this weekend, Daz and Shioban's wedding. That was on uh, the Saturday and uh, I traveled down on the Friday, a long drive and uh, I thought I'd train at my old stomping ground Olympic gym in Eccles and do some deadlifts with Paul George. For those of you who don't know who Paul George is, he's, um, well technically he's a current IFBB pro because you never lose your pro card, but he competed as an IFBB pro uh, between the years of 2004 and 2012 I believe, so he's a pretty damn awesome bodybuilder, just Google him. Um, and then in 2012 he kind of switched to powerlifting, uh, started competing in the 82.5 kilo class uh, as a master. Um, he's currently 55 years old and he holds an all-time world record in the squat with 276 kilos at a body weight of 82.5 and I think it's quite impressive actually how much in terms of stats I actually know about all my friends so you know as well as being all of those things he's a good mate of mine so you know I just went down to train with him um, Olympic gyms are really cool well kitted out gym especially for powerlifting so um, as I've got a competition coming up, the Andy Bolton Deadlift Challenge, in three weeks from now, um, I had the privilege of training on a deadlift bar, Texas deadlift bar, and uh, some Alico calibrated plates. So that is going to as close to mimic uh, a competition setup as you can as you can get, really. And I don't have those things uh, back up home. I'm training on a stiffer bar with uh, plates which aren't calibrated but which the plates don't really make a difference basically as long as they're not lighter if they're lighter then you're basically kidding yourself with the weights you're using anyway so uh, it was a good session um, I literally just worked up to my last heavy single um, which ended up being 350 kilos which is for you Amer if there's even one American listening uh, that is 771, I believe, freedom units. And uh, it, it was actually much more comfortable than last time I pulled 355 raw, which was in competition when I was peaked and stuff. So we're looking at a 365 on competition day. Uh, I believe, well, Paul worked up to a 240, which at the minute is, you know, pretty damn good for a 55 year old guy, especially considering he's in between comps. I think. Uh, his best deadlift is somewhere around uh, 270 to 80. I don't want to get that one wrong, but I think I'm in the ballpark there. And I'm sure we will be back up there again when he's back firing on all cylinders in comp prep and stuff. Uh, you'll also see some footage of my good mate Raz. Um, an absolute bloody tank at 5'5 five five and bloody 125 kilos or whatever he weighs. Uh, I think he was doing some uh, like high spoto presses with one, uh, not one, you know, something like 200 kilos for doubles. So he's a strong dude and fairly funny character, so. <laughs> What's going on, Big Raz? All good, mate. Ready to train. <laughs> Why are you looking so massive today? I always look massive, mate. So central. <laughs> <laughs>
Come on! Up! Up! the knees. Yes! How much is on the bar, Raz? 280. 280. 280, mate. Do you reckon you're going to get it? Of course, get it. 280 pounds. Okay. Come on, Raz. Then Daz's wedding. It was, um, you know, that Daz is, you know, a lifter that I've known for. Well, you know, he's a lifter, but he's mainly a mate. But I met him through lifting, and I've known him for a good while. And uh, he and Shioban, or Shivon, I'll call her by her actual name, but I just call her Shioban. Uh, are a really amazing couple. It was good to see them tie the knot finally after 18 years of knowing each other. And uh, I'm sure they'll have many happy years to come because, you know, they're already there. They were just kind of making it, you know, formally official, I guess. And uh, we had a great day, really. Yeah, so it was a good day. Um, and over the weekend, I stayed in uh, an Airbnb. And um, for those of you unfamiliar, unfamiliar, unfamiliar with what an Airbnb is, it's basically... You go into someone else's property, into someone else's house, and you kind of stay with them. Um, usually they have a spare room, and uh, in my case, I was sharing a bathroom. And when I say sharing a bathroom, I don't mean I was kind of in the shower while they were taking a shit. I mean, it's one bathroom and you're using it at separate times, but you don't get your own ensuite or anything like you might do in a hotel. And uh, I had my own bedroom, of course, double bed. You know, it, it was nice and it was it was definitely more than adequate. I could cook in the kitchen, brought my own food, made it a bit cheaper, uh, which is, you know, pretty vital for anyone who's, like myself, taking his nutrition seriously because, I, you know, I'm an athlete uh, in the loosest sense of the world, word as a powerlifter, but I take it seriously. I, I like to optimise everything. That's kind of what I'm about in this sport because I want to fulfill my potential. No matter how high that might be or low that might be, I want to fulfill it. And um, yeah, so my first experience with an Airbnb, I didn't get roped into cuckold, uh, which is always a possibility. Maybe they were gonna rope me into cuckold, but maybe they would took one look at me and thought, that's not quite what we're looking for. Um, which, you know, I guess I'm slightly offended, maybe slightly relieved too. And um, other than that, on the weekend, I met up with my old friend, not old friend, current friend, but I don't get to see him as much anymore, living up north, Tom Bates. We had a couple of uh, coffees and catch-ups and uh, just, you know, I don't want to say anything overly gay, not that there's anything wrong with being gay, of course, uh, but like, if I had a soulmate who was a guy, then that would be him. We just get on so well and we, we're on the same page with so many things. It's just, you know, just one of those friends, a friend for life. And uh, moving away has kind of really sucked in terms of, you know, not being around him as much. But, you know, I guess absence makes the heart grow fonder. And, you know, when we do meet up, we, we try and make the most of the time we have. And that was pretty much my weekend, but through all of it, kind of being at the wedding and stuff, and just having time to think and 
having time to be away from the things that I'm involved in, i.e. a family life, because I've got a son now with my with my girlfriend Amy, and uh, be being away from editing the magazine and running my coaching business, I had the opportunity to basically think about how anything that you perceive to not be that great in your life or that isn't going that great that you might blame on other people sometimes and I'm not saying that you might blame on other people because I don't want to sound like a life coach here what I'm saying is I've not figured it out and I'm figuring it out figuring it out now so this is not advice this is advice to me more than anything and I've got caught in this really slow traffic and that's what's thrown me off um, or in fact I've got caught behind a trailer or something but my point being is sometimes I perceive things not to be going that great in my life or I get pissed off about certain little things and uh, maybe blame other people, blame circumstances, this, that and the other. But I kind of realise sometimes that, you know, how good you actually have it and then that, that I actually have it and uh, I just kind of, you know, being away kind of gives me time to list the things that I'm grateful for in my mind even if I'm not trying to I kind of subconsciously start thinking about them and realize you know what I do have going for me in my life and how I can make things better independent of you know these people that I might automatically blame shifting it onto them all the time so it gives me a bit of motivation and enables me to get fired up again for going back to try and make some changes for the positive and end up living the life I actually want to lead uh, because that's been kind of a big thing for me you know for I would say the last few years really being kind of dissatisfied with where I am and wanting to be better all the time and although there are certain trains of thought which say you know being dissatisfied is the easiest way to become unhappy um, you know I, I think I'm wired for continual improvement and I think that that is shown essentially by me being a powerlifter and me wanting to be better all the time I think in a way it transfers over to my actual my actual life um, and it's the same there but uh, it's a bit more complicated in in that way and I've taken a lot more time trying to figure it out and I'm still trying to figure it out but enough on that that's enough for this you know week weekend and I'm gonna go home now I'm gonna look after my little son for a bit uh, and then Amy and I are going over to my mum and dad's who've also moved up to Newcastle uh, for some dinner so that should be nice some salmon that's what I'm having anyway. <laughs>